Hello my friends, we are back on Luminar Neo and today we are talking about histogram. I'm gonna start with this image over here and if you go to edit, on the tool menu, no you do not have a special button that will show Instagram uh, histogram AI. No you do not have a special button that will uh, show uh, histogram AI. You will find your histogram into the develop for now, into the curve tool, it's this gray mountain over here. Now, how do we read the histogram? On the very, very left side, there is the blacks, then you have shadows, you have midtones in the middle, then you have highlights and whites. By looking at this histogram for this particular image, by the way, you have to be in this white dot, which is your luminance, and um, we can see we have no pure blacks in this image, and we have no pure whites. We do have shadows, we have midtones, and we have highlights. And for this particular image, this is perfectly exposed. We don't clip any highlights, we don't crush any shadows. And for this particular image, this is perfectly exposed. We are not clipping any highlights, we are not crushing any shadows. Now, a big misconception is that your histogram should always look like this, like a big peak in the middle of your histogram. They should not be on one side or the other. And that is just purely not true. I am going to give you an example. For example, let's take this image. When we look at this image, we see that the histogram is all the way on the left side. So we have blacks and shadows. We have no midtones, highlights, or whites. And that is okay because this is a very accurate representation of what the scene looked like. If I would move the exposure, let's say, so I can change the histogram the way it was in the waterfall Im image where everything is kind of in the middle. Well, now we have an overexposed image and that is not an accurate representation of the scene. So it's overexposed. I'm going to reset that. And the same thing in this image. In this image, we are doing the opposite. We have our histogram is sitting on the very right. We have a lot of highlights. We have barely no midtones no shadows and no blacks. And that is okay because we have no blacks in the image and we have no shadows. So this is a accurate representation of the scene. If I would move the exposure to the left to move that peak in the middle, we now have an underexposed image. Our background is not white anymore. The coffee mug, it's gray. So that would not be accurate. So you see, sometimes it's okay for your histogram to sit in the very left or very right, if that's what you're seeing it's like. Let's look at a few examples where we are blowing up the highlights or crushing the shadows. This image will open our histogram again, and we see that the shadows are crushed on the left. And I believe this was a creative choice of, a photo of the photographer. He wanted to expose like this to crush the blacks and get it all black. And it looks good like this. I don't think this is an underexposed image. Creatively, it was perfectly done. Now, technically, it is underexposed because the blacks are crushed and we get no information in there. Let's look at a situation where the highlights are blown out. And we have this image over here. And let's see our histogram. Now our whites are crushed. That means the background in here is completely white. There is no detail in there. And also the top of our dessert has no detail. And even if we move the whites all the way to the left, we're not recovering any of those whites. Everything just kind of becomes gray. The information is gone. And um, if you shoot in raw, you do have a little bit more um, leverage over the highlights and shadows to recover them. But if they're completely blown out or crushed, well, then you cannot recover them even with raw. Let's do one more example and we'll do this example over here. And we will go to our develop and curve tool. We'll look at our histogram. And here we see we have a lot of darks. We crush a little bit of the blacks and we are not having any whites, but we do have highlights. The highlights are represented by the sun rays coming through and these highlights on the grass. And then we have the darks, all the foliage, and the blacks being crushed a little bit in the very shadows in the corners. So we started presentations of what it should look like based on each case. Let's see, how do we use it for editing? 
because you do have a histogram on the back of your camera. Well, I'm going to show you one more example really quick. This image, it looks very well exposed in the skin and stuff, but you see the hair or the wig in this case, it's very overexposed. And we can see that, but the, this very peak on the very right side, which means the whites are completely overexposed. Let's see if we can recover. And you see, even if I move the highlights all the way to the left and the whites all the way to the left, now we're not in the very right of the histogram anymore because we don't have pure whites anymore, but this just kind of turned to grayish, gray color and um, there is no detail. There's Everything is just gone there. Now let's see how we would use the histogram to edit the photo. I'm going to open this image, which it is underexposed. When I look at my histogram, you will see it's completely underexposed. Or not completely, but very underexposed. So let's see what happens. When I open the shadows, look at the histogram. You see how it's moving to the right, so it's balancing things out a little bit. I can also move the exposure and move that even more to the right. But now I'm starting to lose detail here on the clouds where the, light, the highlights are. So I can bring the highlights down so I can protect those. And I'm not touching the right side, so that means I'm not blowing up any highlights. I can also lift the blacks a little bit to show more of details over here in the very, very shadows. And now we have a lot better starting point to edit an image. So this is our before and this is after. And from here on, we can apply all those creative colors and so on. Let's do a different example. And I will choose this one. And let's see. What do we see? We have darks, we have lights, we have all kinds of ranges here. So the way I would edit this, maybe I'll pull down the highlights just a little bit, but then increase the white. I don't want to blow them out. You see, like if I go to the edge and then I'll up the shadows just to get a little bit more details into the hair and eyes. You see the hair and the eyes when I move it up? And then I can bring the blacks down to counter that a little bit and it will get a little bit more contrast. And let's see. This is our before and after. Before and after. I get a lot more details now in the hair and the eyes. Before and after. And also the white, if you look down here at the robes and whatever is going on in the background, they used to be almost blown out. They're too bright and now they're toned down more. This is all I had to show you about the histogram. And I hope this made sense. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. My name is Skylar Ewing. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.